Ambassador Walker, thanks very much indeed for joining us in the show. China's new leadership made the debut last year. The coming two sessions meetings will mark another milestone in China's political society. So how do you think the new leadership will affect China? And how do you think the new leadership will be different from the old one? China is very important to New Zealand, um, and, uh, and therefore we take a great interest in, uh, in China uh, in, in, in all regards within our, our abilities. And the um, leadership um, uh, changes that have been going on in the party at the end of last year and, and due to come up soon in the National People's Congress uh, are of great interest to New Zealand as they are to, to all the other countries of the region and indeed the world. China is very important these days. Um, I, I would make a quick comment, too, that we're very fortunate. We've had many visits by senior Chinese leaders. Um, New Zealand um, uh, seems to be of interest. Hopefully we, we, you know, we make their time uh, well spent. Um, and in my four years as ambassador, I've accompanied uh, four members of the new Politburo um, on visits to New Zealand, um, including the number one and the number two leaders. And just last year, um, also two other um, uh, members of the Politburo. And, um, and we're delighted about that because we're a small country, quite a long way away, and we feel very much part of the Asia-Pacific region and, uh, and, we're, and, and, and close to China um, in many, many ways. But it is a, a distance, and so the fact that we have these opportunities to meet China's senior leaders um, and for them to form a first-hand impression of New Zealand is very important. Our leaders also visit China regularly. Um, our Prime Minister, John Key, has visited twice uh, since he has been Prime Minister, and he has made clear his um, strong interest in visiting China uh, closely in the wake of the changes, um, the new leadership changes um, at the National People's Congress, and I'm optimistic that that will prove possible. We take a great interest. What we have seen uh, is that China has, um, in a very orderly way, um, in accordance with a timetable that it made clear that it would be pursuing um, quite a long time in advance, it has refreshed its leadership. It is refreshing its leadership. The new leadership um, are people who um, uh, have great experience already. They're familiar uh, to us. They've been um, the two key people have been running uh, China in an important way already for the last um, period, um, members already of the Standing Committee of the um, Politburo of the Party and very important state capacities. And the other new top leadership uh, members have also been in important roles. Um, they've been running big cities, big ministries, big areas of the economy. So in, in, in one sense, I would say we're impressed by the continuity on um, and at the same time, the fact that there has been a rejuvenation. There are younger people in many cases, um, but also um, people coming forward freshly into higher um, posts. We watch that. We see that with great interest. Um, and um, probably the key point is that just as China's challenges and, 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 and the world's challenges um, do move forward. You do need new people, changes, orderly um, change, uh, to, to, and people with new ideas, new approaches, but within a, a sort of framework of policy continuity to address those. And, uh, and, and we watch with great interest what's uh, the, the process taking place in China right now. Um, many issues will be addressed this year by the NPC and CPPCC members. Um, Prominent discussion topics include anti-corruption, of course, and housing price regulation, and, of course, uh, even government organization reform this year, which already started in 2008. But my question is, which specific areas are most of interest to you? Or uh, what do you think that China... Do you think that China can learn lessons from the way you have handled similar issues in New, Ze in New Zealand? Well, um we, of course, uh, will follow the um, proceedings at the National People's Congress uh, with great interest. It's, it's a really important event. Um, every year there is an important session of the, of, of the Congress and then the Standing Committee meets uh, in between. But this is the five-yearly big event with um, important leadership changes and important policy um, um, issues before it. What interests us is, as one might expect um, from a country with a very good relationship with China, important trade, economic, political, people-to-people -people relationship, 
we're very interested, I suppose, first and foremost in um, the economic, the economic policy dimension. I think all the world is. China's playing a vital role at this time uh, in the world economy. Um, and that will only grow in future. Um, so the economy. Um, for us, the, uh, although a lot of the focus naturally at the National People's Congress is on domestic issues, um, but the foreign policy dimension and, and, and issues relating to um, global issues, you know, environmental issues and, and regional issues, um, those are of great interest to us as well. So the, you know, the, the foreign affairs side of consideration at the National People's Congress is always of great interest. Um, we're also interested um, in, um, in issues that you've touched on, including relating to governance issues. Um, we, um, we, 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 um, we, we note and we follow closely the debates going on within China, the, the, the signals coming from the new leadership of um, renewed and intensified attention to, um, to governance issues, corruption, um, uh, to, to public ethics, to transparency, all of these things. These are of interest, I think, to outside countries and partners of China. Um, if, I, if I could summarize, I would say that uh, there's a great respect in New Zealand for what China has achieved. Um, in, uh, in, if I say the past 35 years, I'm, I'm conscious there that the I think next, this year, later this year, will be the 35th anniversary of the, um, of the, um, the third plenum of the 11th Central Committee. I mean, and that's, I first came to China to work here uh, as a diplomat in 1984, and this is my third time here. My first time, obviously, as ambassador, but I was here as a, a second secretary and a counselor in the 80s and the 90s. And, um, and so, you know, we have a great respect. I mean, you know, economically, uh, what China has achieved is, it's, it's it, I was going to say miraculous, but it's been done through hard work and intelligent policy and enormous effort and sacrifice by Chinese people for which, for which China deserves great respect. And, um, and it's been done within a very consistent policy framework um, in the old days, it was called the four modernizations. But, you know, I think opening uh, reform, opening to the outside world, um, these, these have been very consistent and, and, and um, directions that I think countries like New Zealand have come to rely on, and we still do. Uh, we see China uh, moving uh, strongly, continuing to move strongly in those directions. We uh, in New Zealand have benefited greatly. The Asia Pacific's benefited greatly. We um, have been proud to be the first developed country to conclude a free trade agreement with China. Um, that was signed in April 2008, and we'll celebrate the fifth anniversary of that in April of this year. And I mentioned that uh, we're looking forward to a very senior level visit from New Zealand, hopefully uh, early in after the NPC. Um, I'm optimistic about that. And that would be to mark, um, amongst other important achievements, the fifth anniversary of our free trade agreement. Um, also, the 40th anniversary of diplomatic relations has just taken place, another milestone. But on the economy and on our, our trading relationship, um, China is now New Zealand's second partner. Um, Australia is our number one partner because it's our close neighbor and, and a very important economy for us. But after um, Australia, China is our number two trade partner. And increasingly for us, as for many countries, um, you know, what happens to how China's economy develops, um, how China develops you know, has a fundamental impact for us. And so we're, we're very interested. And what we are keen to see is a continuation of the trend of development that's been so successful for China and I think has contributed so much to the region and to us um, in, over these 35 years, which is the period that I've uh, roughly, or, or that broad period when I have experience of the relationship and when New Zealand's engagement has really um, developed strongly. Now, many things feed into that, but I'll, I'll rest my comments um, at this point to say that when we look at the MPC and the policies and the issues and the debates, those are strong focuses for us. Perhaps I should lastly add that obviously the new leadership that emerges, I mean, while some of the key um, um, outlines of that, the very top, um, are quite widely expected, there are many, you know, for... for for um, an ambassador, for, for people who are working in embassies, 
um, for New Zealand um, ministers, uh, New Zealand um, leaders, for business leaders. There's great interest in also who um, a, a wide range of the new appointments will be, um, from vice premiers to ministers to vice ministers and, um, and so on. And all of these will become known after the National People's Congress. And as I'm sure you're very aware, the diplomatic community in Beijing is um, anticipating and debating and, uh, and watching with great uh, or, or preparing uh, to, um, you know, to see what, what, what comes out with great interest. Ambassador Walker, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on the show, Andrew.